Hi YouTube, uh, Evan Thompson here again. I wanted to do a little tutorial on how to send program changes from your DAW to the Digitone and the Digitact. It's a really powerful way of basically giving them a song mode, if you will. And let's get into it then. Okay, so first things first here, we're gonna set up um, everything we need on the Digitone so it communicates correctly with Ableton. So we're gonna go to settings, and there's a few things we need to do. So let's start with system, USB config, and this should be set to USB MIDI. So that's the setting you need there. Okay, next, uh, let's go to MIDI config and sync, and make sure we've got transport receive selected and program change receive obviously important, and clock receive. That's all good. So we need this checked, this checked, and this checked. All right. Next is port config. So settings, MIDI config, port config, and we need input from USB so that our um, MIDI is coming from the, going through the USB cable. All right, and you could also use, if you were using a MIDI cable and you had a MIDI interface to go from your computer, you could set it to MIDI as well. USB is faster though and better. Okay, so now we need to go to channels. Okay, and we need to look at what, what our um, program change in is set to auto. So the program changes that are coming into the Digitone from Ableton are gonna be on the channel that's set to auto, and that channel is, if we look at auto channel up here, is 10. So that's important, so. Okay, so that's everything here. And I'll put on the screen all of those um, uh, settings I just set. All right, and let's go over to Ableton. Okay, so here we are in Ableton, and we are going to make sure that our settings in here are correct. So I'm gonna go to Live, Preferences, and under Link Tempo MIDI here, this section, we're gonna make sure that our MIDI um, can send as an output to the Digitone, Digitone out, that's correct. All right, and then down here under our electron digitone out one, we need track and sync checked. So both of these have to be uh, checked. Okay, so those are, the, those are the settings you need here. And so we're good there. Okay, so there's, there's two ways to um, send program changes in live. Um, the first way is on the MIDI track. The second way is with an external instrument. Um, plugin or well external instrument anyway so the first way any live user can can do regardless of the version they have light whatever it is the second way is only for people with I believe standard and sweet I believe so first we'll do uh, the way that everyone can do it so just grab a MIDI track I'll just rename it program changes Okay, and now I'll put the output of our MIDI, right, because we're sending MIDI to it, to the Digitone. And then for channel, I'm going to set it to 10 because that's what we set in our Digitone settings for the um, program change input channel for MIDI, okay? All right, so now we've got that set up. Now I need to set up so I can hear the Digitone. And so I'll label this audio track Digitone, and for me, that's in that's seven and eight here, and set this to in, okay. And now we will, if I press play, we should let me change the tempo. All right, now if I press play, I should hear uh, that's the digitone coming through. All right, so now let's uh, do these program changes. 
here we go. I want four bars because my patterns are four bars long. So I'm just going to insert a MIDI clip here. All right, and I'm going to make it a little shorter than four bars, and I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. I'm going to turn looping off, by the way. Okay, and then just extend this. And then I'm going to duplicate this. So as you can see, it's the the um, clips are not changing on the downbeats here, and that's for a reason. That's important because basically this little bit of time before this fifth measure five comes in, this is the amount of time that you, the um, in in this period of time that the program uh, the diggy tone will have to receive the. Uh, MIDI signal you're sending for the program change because you you can't just send the program change right on Beat five because that's not enough time right because then the pattern on the diggy tone start started over already So you need to give it some time you can give it less time than this, but that's just how I set it up And now so I'm going to duplicate this and if that didn't make sense it, it will in a moment. So Check this out. So I select the MIDI clip. I want come down here and under clip, click over this arrow and these, these these programs. That's all I need to mess with. So that's program uh, value one, which corresponds to the first bank and pattern one. And then it's just sequential. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen. And then if you went to bank two, and pattern one would be seventeen. Okay, so it's just sequential. It's really simple in that way so we'll set this to program value one go to the next midi clip set that to two this one set it to three there it is and four and then five so now when i press play it should cycle through the different um patterns on my diggy tone without me having to do that. So we're on pattern one, now we're going to pattern two. There it is. And so now if you see as we come up to this MIDI clip, it's going to send the program change right here. And then that gives it time to switch to the next pattern, and it did. We switch again to pattern four. Oops, <laughs> I screwed it up by, but it was it's it's working there. You you may not be able to hear it because the patterns are similar. It's sort of a progression. Um. So yeah, it's as easy as that. Um, I guess it's not too easy, but it's it works, and that's how you do it. Okay. So now the second way to do this is to do it with an external instrument. And 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 that's base it's basically the same. So I'm going to turn off the tone here and I'm going to bring an external instrument to this MIDI track and like I said before if you don't have um, if you don't have a standard or suite this won't um, work. You won't have the external instrument option. So the nice thing about the external instrument is that you can route um, every you don't need an extra audio track to um, to get the dig, what, what to hear the diggy tone, so I can delete all the audio tracks and then on here down here external instrument just set it to diggy tone channel ten like we need, and then down here from audio from I set it to seven eight so it's basically like a little audio track like routing right here, and so now when I make these um, MIDI clips again. So I'll do that. All right, and then duplicate and extend a little. Good, and then just duplicate those and program one and two. And I'll just let you hear that change. As you can hear it changed 
and we could hear the diggy tone. So that's all through the external instrument. So the whole point of these program changes sending from Ableton or whatever your DAW is, is so it can free you up on the diggy tone um, or diggy tact um, to improvise without having to worry about um, changing patterns, right? So you can just kind of, you can do what you will as, as, um, as the DAW sends the MIDI changes. So it's kind of giving the diggy tone or diggy tact a song mode because it doesn't have a song mode other than the pattern chaining. So you can do pattern chaining by, if, like if I hold pattern and then I go one, two, three, four, five, and I, and then it'll play the chain uh, like this. Although I, I, yeah, no, okay. So it should go to the pattern two there with the crash. Okay, so that works, right? But if I'm gonna do, um, for this song in particular, you probably, I don't know if you can tell, but this is an arrangement, probably not for um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, right? And it's not a very repetitive song. It's not like an electronic uh, a song or a simple electronic song anyway. And so I've got, you know, I've got a bunch of different banks with patterns, like with the whole song laid out. So I don't want to have to, I can't easily chain that, right? And I'd have to redo it every time. So I'm not going to do that. So that's why you send the, this, the um, program uh, change values and it works out. So let's try and I'll just do like a little improvisy thing while it plays. Why not? Just to demonstrate. So it, it'll change the pattern as I as I do things, so. So I don't have to worry about that and I can just improvise. And so there it is. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Evan Thompson and I hope to see you on the channel again. Thank you. <laughs>